Welcome to Family Law Talk, presented by Kirk Stange of Stange Law Firm, PC. Stange Law Firm is a family law firm in the St. Louis metro area with offices in Missouri and Illinois. Now, here's your host, Kirk Stange. Welcome to Family Law Talk. My name is Kirk Stange, and I am a managing partner of Stange Law Firm, PC. Stange Law Firm is a family law firm in the St. Louis metro area. We have offices in Missouri, and we have offices in Illinois. Uh, today's topic is being a peacemaker versus a war maker. Be- before we get to today's topic, I should state this. Uh, the choice of a lawyer is an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertisements. Further, the information you obtain today in this podcast is general in nature, and it may not apply to specific factual or legal circumstance. Therefore, if you require legal advice, please consult with a, an attorney competent and licensed to practice law in your specific jurisdiction. All right, again, today's topic being a peacemaker versus a war maker. Uh, this is a blog article based off a blog article uh, that we posted uh, November 10th, 2010, so a long time ago, more than three years ago, uh, on one of our blogs called stlfathersrights.com. Uh, a really interesting article, um, one that uh, I think for me as an attorney has been pretty impactful for me. And, and in a lot of ways, it, it expressed uh, my overall philosophy and our firm's overall philosophy in terms of how to handle custody cases. And it just kind of encapsulated it perfectly. Now, I'll state this. I mean, this whole concept, I mean, it's, it's based on an, an article. Uh, well, I should say the term peacemaker versus war maker. It's based on an article that I read in 2010, uh, written by an individual named Danny Gusby, and we cite it on our blog article. So these specific terms are his terms. Uh, he came up with this. I, I certainly didn't. Um, but uh, 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 I think that the, the way uh, this article frames it is perfect. I think it's uh, pretty brilliant, uh, to be honest, uh, with all the listeners out there. And, and, and the, the theme of the article is this. And like I said, the perfect part about this article is that uh, – I think it encapsulated the way uh, uh, I've practiced uh, for probably the 10 years prior to uh, to reading this article, but it just encapsulated it perfectly. It's kind of one of those moments like, wow, uh, this individual put into words perfectly kind of the whole approach I'd seen over the decade leading up to it. But, uh, but the approach is this, which is if you're going through a family law case, um, there is often – uh, the desire on the parts of lots of individuals, or I think just the belief that what you want to do is be really aggressive. You know, you're you're really aggressive in court. Your attorney's really aggressive in court. Uh, figuratively, you pound on on counsel table. Um, you're super aggressive. Uh, you show the court and the other attorney that uh, you're super aggressive and you're going to be mean, and, and that that somehow is going to uh, uh, get a positive result in a custody case, sort of the the tantrum approach. In other words, you throw a big tantrum in court, you're ultra-aggressive, uh, you go after the other party, uh, you fling a lot of mud, and, and the idea out there is that this is somehow going to help uh, a parent uh, in a custody case. And, and this article really uh, uh, nukes uh, this whole idea uh, that, that being ultra-aggressive, uh, that pounding on the table, uh, in essence, throwing a tantrum uh, in the courtroom is going to help an individual trying to seek custody. I just totally nukes it. And the truth of the matter is, is this: is that for individuals going through custody cases out there, obviously these are very difficult times. Um, I mean, I can't think of a more stressful situation for an individual than to go through uh, a custody case in, in the family law arena. I mean, when you have kids, you want to be involved in your kids' lives. At least the good parents out there. And, and uh, you know, you're going through a divorce and or a custody case, and you feel like you know maybe your relationship with the mom is being torn apart, and now you're losing your kids as well, and that can be a pretty overwhelming feeling. And so, in a lot of ways, I can I can understand the temptation to become angry, um, the temptation to want to throw a tantrum, but at the end of the day, it's counterproductive. It really, truly doesn't help individuals in a custody case. Uh, to obtain their goal, which is to either have custody or be an active part in their kids' lives. So so let's talk about the article uh, specifically. What the article talks about is is a parent going through a custody case. Uh, what's important is to look like a good parent. Uh, 
and I should say look like a good parent, but I mean be a good parent. Show the judge you are a good parent uh, who cares for your kids and that you're putting your kids sort of above the mudslinging, uh, above the argument, uh, and, and and be a good parent. And, and to, to show the judge that you're a good parent, what the article talks about is you need to persuade peacefully. Um, uh, persuade peacefully. Um, by persuading peacefully, uh, you show the judge uh, that you're even-tempered, uh, that you're the kind of person uh, that can be trusted to have custody of the kids or lots of time for the kids because you're a mature, rational parent. And to just take a couple quotes out of the article, in defining the term peacemaker, a peacemaker does not cause disruptions. A peacemaker is not inflammatory. A peacemaker does not engage in name-calling, according to the article. And again, this is the exact opposite of, of what a lot of people what a lot of people think that they want uh, in terms of their family court representation, uh, you know, don't be inflammatory. Don't cause disruptions. Don't engage in name calling. Well, <clears throat> a lot of the listeners out there would say, "Well, but I think my soon-to-be ex-spouse uh, is evil and vile, or isn't a good person. I don't think he or she is putting the interest of the kids first. And I, you know, there's this desire that. Uh, um, it's a good thing to tell the judge that. In other words, paint yourself as a 10 and paint your spouse as a 1, and, and dad at the end of the day will help in a custody case. And, and the article says it's actually the opposite. So rather than resorting to name-calling or telling the judge uh, that uh, your soon-to-be ex-spouse or your ex-spouse is evil or vile, what the article says is this, and it gives a quote, which which is just a, a sample of what somebody might say, but it gives some good overall parameters for, for people out there. So the quote is, Your Honor, I admire my wife's emotional nature when it's loving, but it seems she wants to blame me alone for the divorce. The facts are I picked her, she picked me, we have a child, we've made a mess of our marriage, and we need to shield our child from the fallout. I understand her anger, bitterness, and disappointment. I felt it myself, and I'm finally moving past blaming my wife. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, again... If you read that quote, what what an individual who who says something like that is doing is they're persuading peacefully. Um, they're not painting themselves at ten, and the other uh, the other parent is a one. They're not calling names. They're not being inflammatory. They're not saying that the other the other parent's a bad parent. Uh, they're trying to rise above it, and um, and that in essence is uh, the theme of the article, um, which is really interesting. Um, if you go back to the original article um, that we cite in our blog entry, it, it uses the the comparison to Nelson Mandela, which is, you know, uh, Nelson Mandela, you know, from South Africa. Obviously, he waged peace. Um, you know, there was an injustice in the country he lived in, and he was fighting that injustice. But instead of resorting to anger and violence, uh, his approach uh, was to persuade peacefully. And by persuading peacefully. You know, ultimately he prevailed in his struggle, and that and that's the same comparison that's being made uh, uh, here in, in terms of the family courtroom. You know, there could be this temptation to figuratively resort to um, yeah, a non-peaceful uh, manner in, in terms of presenting a case in the courtroom, but uh, uh, according to this article, that's a bad idea. And I can just tell the listeners out there, you know, and doing family law 13 years now, you know, what judges are looking for is is I mean, who's who's reasonable, who's rational, who's putting the kids first, and who's trying to be a good parent? And that's what a court is looking at when they're trying to make a determination is the custody. Well, the counter to that, when I tell clients that, is this, well, Kurt, I mean, are you saying then uh, that we shouldn't prepare the case, that we shouldn't move forward uh, uh, with the case, uh, that maybe we should just settle the case and I should agree to terms uh, maybe that are bad? And, and I would I would – you know, tell the listeners out there, absolutely not. And that's not what this article says, uh, and that's not what we're saying as well. Uh, at the end of the day, um, <clears throat> you can prepare your case. Uh, you can take depositions. You can do discovery. Uh, you can. I mean, you have to do what you need to do in order to present the best possible case in the courtroom. But at the same time, you don't have to be inflammatory about it. You can be professional. Um, you can be even keeled. You can be even tempered about it, and 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 let the other side fling the mud. Let the other side uh, be the angry ones. Let the other side um, 
engage in actions that that don't appear as if they're trying to persuade peacefully. And, and by doing that, again, when a judge is looking at two parties and one party is flinging a lot of mud and the other party is trying to rise above it and, and just be a good parent, in a custody case, if a judge figures out that that's what's going on, in most cases, not all cases, of course, but in most cases, uh, the family court judge is going to be impressed with the parent that's trying to be reasonable, trying to be rational, trying to do the right things, and uh, trying not to be inflammatory. And a parent who's doing the opposite of that, I mean, quite frankly, in most cases, they don't look like um, they don't look like the kind of parent that the judge would want to give custody to. And again, it's just the exact opposite of what. Uh, uh, I think a lot of people think. I mean, a lot of people look at a lot of attorneys' web pages. They look at a lot of advertising, and what they're looking for is an aggressive attorney. They say, um, but again, I tell the listeners out there, I don't know that you want an aggressive attorney. What you want is an attorney that's bold, uh, that that isn't afraid to uh, advocate your interest, explain to the judge uh, uh, the positive attributes of you. I mean, you want an attorney that definitely does that. I mean, you want an attorney that's prepared, that knows the facts to your case, that's prompt, that returns phone calls, uh, and that will advocate for you vehemently. But you want them uh, to advocate in a way where you look like the peacemaker, the other party looks like the war maker, and while the other side's flinging mud, you're not getting down into that with them. You're rising above it, and you're showing the court uh, that you are a parent that has your eyes on what's most important, which is your kids. And so, again, outstanding article. Uh, it's an article that, frankly, like I said, it's been it's been on our blog for for a long time now. It's one of my favorite blog entries. I think it kind of encapsulates a great overall approach to to how to handle a child custody case. I'd encourage all the listeners to uh, read it. Again, the article is November tenth, two thousand ten. It's on our blog, stlfathersrights.com. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, that concludes our episode today of Family Law Talk with Stangy Law Firm. I appreciate all the listeners listening, and stay tuned next time for our next episode. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Family Law Talk with Kirk Stangy. Visit stangylawfirm.com for more about today's topic or to put Stangy Law Firm to work for your family today. Discover, this is Daniela. Hi, it's Jennifer Coolidge. I just want to thank you for making me feel so special. I earned cash back on debit for my dinner party groceries. That's great. But with Discover Cashback Debit, we give everyone cash back on everyday purchases. Anything else I can help you with? Do you like asparagus and mushroom sorbet? I've got leftovers. Introducing Discover Cashback Debit, a checking account with cash back. It pays to Discover. Eligibility in terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. The holidays start here at Kroger with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. You could do a classic herb roasted turkey or spice it up and make turkey tacos. Serve up a go-to shrimp cocktail or use Simple Truth wild caught shrimp for your first Cajun risotto. Make creamy mac and cheese or a spinach artichoke fondue from our selection of Murray's cheese. No matter how you shop, Kroger has all the freshest ingredients to embrace all your holiday traditions. Kroger, fresh for everyone.